Well, good morning, everyone. How are you today? We are coming to you live on Facebook from my studio, from the Sue Pellin Design Studio. And I just want to talk to you about all of the different options for learning how to use the Leaves Galore tools. So here I am in my Sue Pellin Design Studio. And what you see on my table here is where I'm going to be doing my demonstrations. So let me just come on the screen for a moment on the big screen here so that I can talk to you directly for just a few minutes before we do our demonstration. It is such a pleasure for me to be here with all of you today. Um, I Let's stop this uh, screen. There we go. I would normally be at the Mancuso Quilt Show in Springfield, Mass this week. And I am really sad not to be able to be there with all of my customers, my friends, the other vendors. And um, so I'm bringing you this live video instead so I can do just what I do at these live events and I can demonstrate for you the Leaves Galore and the Hearts and More tools. So I've decided to take three days so that I can recreate what I do in my booth space there at the shows. On day one, we did the um, quilter's chalk line and all different techniques using the quilter's chalk line for marking our fabrics. Today, we're going to look at fusing our fabrics with Misty Fuse. We did that yesterday, too. And we're also going to be uh, learning how to use the Leaves Galore tools to make beautiful applique shapes quickly and easily with our rotary cutter. Then tomorrow, which is Saturday morning at 11, we're going to be looking at using the Hearts and More tools to make applique shapes as well. When we use the Hearts and More tools, we're also going to be cutting with our rotary cutter and we're going to be cutting some beautiful circles to make the Blue Moons quilt. But today we're going to focus on Leaves Galore. Leaves Galore are the tools that I designed to cut applique shapes up to four layers of fabric and fusible at a time using your rotary cutter to cut these gentle, easy curves. So this is a fast and easy, easy way to do fusible applique. Now, I always get a lot of questions about hand applique. If you're one of those people that loves hand applique, go ahead and ask your questions in the comments. Now, um, I have a lot of comments already. We have lots of people coming on to enjoy our demonstration today. I have people from all over the country coming in and thank you. Um, you couldn't find the live demo, but here you are from the Tulsa area. So June, I hope that means that you've now found us and you're watching the live demo. If you missed the live demo, you can watch us on replay, no big deal. So today I want to cover what we can do with the Leaves Galore tools and how you're gonna use these to make your applique shapes. But there's some other things we need to learn before we go ahead and jump into our Leaves Galore tools. So let me just go over the packages that I have available because this is our no-show show because we're not at a show today. Instead, we're here with you. I want to offer you the same show specials that I offer at my live shows when I'm at the national shows. Um, and just to be clear, just because I am not in Springfield at the Mancuso show, the Mancuso show is still going on online. So you can visit the Mancuso show online and look at all of your favorite vendors. But I thought it would be better for me to come here right here with you on Facebook three days in a row, rather than tagging on to their show that they are having online. So I just wanted to be clear that show is still happening. It's an online show. And after we're done here, I encourage you to go visit with them. Hey, from California. Hi, from Tampa. Hey, Minnesota, I see all of my friends that I know already, and I see a whole lot of new friends out here. I see Connie and Carolyn and Diane and Sandy, and it's so nice that you all found me here today. So I want to just change my screen, and then I'm gonna add my second screen over here so that you can see what I'm doing down on the table. 
So today I want to talk about the show specials that we have available to you, just like we do at the shows. The show specials are made so that you can get all of my Leaves Galore tools, all of my hearts and more tools, and all of the things that I think are so important to use when you are doing fusible rotary cut applique. So I'm going to go through the specials really quickly. And I do want to show, um, I'll go, you know what, I'll go through the specials after. I do want to show you all of my favorite products that are in those show specials. So let's come back to that, that in a minute. And the first thing that we're going to start off with is fusing our applique fabric. Now I've got this great little pressing sheet, um, pressing board. This is made by TNT Quilt Boards. They are friends of mine that do these, these shows with me. Um, they do the live shows and they're probably over at the Mancuso show today, the live show that they're having. But I want to show you how I'm going to use my applique pressing sheet and my Misty Fuse to put the fusible on the back of our fabrics in order to get our fabrics ready for applique. Now, if you were with me yesterday, you already saw this demonstration, but it's so important and it's such a big part of my process that I wanna show you that again. So I'm using Misty Fuse here. This Misty Fuse is my favorite fusible web. It's very, very lightweight. Um, we're gonna put it on the back of our fabric using an applique pressing sheet. So this Misty Fuse is different from all the other fusibles that are out on the market today. Most of the fusibles that you will see, in fact, pretty much all of them have a paper backing. And Misty Fuse has no paper backing. You can see it's just a thin fusible web. Well, I buy it by the roll like this because I love it so much. I use it every single day and getting it by the roll gives it to me in a way that there's no wrinkles, there's no creases. And I just love putting this on a paper towel holder under my um, pressing surface. So I just roll out what I want, throw it back down under the table when I don't need it anymore. And it's always out of harm's way. Okay, so I buy mine by the roll like this, but you can also get it in 10 yard packs and two and a half yard packages. The rolls are 100 yard rolls or a 50 yard roll. So you have two different ways, um, four different ways to buy it. 100 yard roll, 50 yard roll, 10 yard package and a two and a half yard package. All right, so I've laid out the Misty Fuse on the back of my applique fabric and I've cut it out the same size as the fabric. There's no extra fusible hanging over the edges and that's because I don't wanna get the fusible on my applique pressing sheet. If I have excess fusible, it's gonna to melt to the pressing sheet and then you're gonna to need to clean off your sheet. And that's no big deal. I can show you how to clean off your sheet. It's really easy. I'm just gonna iron this fusible onto the back of my applique fabrics. And when I do, I'm using this nice large pressing sheet. Now this is the Fat Goddess Sheet by Misty Fuse. I love using the Fat Goddess Sheet by Misty Fuse because it's so big. I can take that sheet and I can put half of it under my applique fabrics and I can put the other half over the applique fabric. Sorry, I just dropped the little holder for my iron. And um, now, I'm, you know, I'm gonna take that um, banner. Let me take that banner down so that you can see the, the bottom of my fabric. Well, you know, I don't, I don't wanna take the time to do that. Let's just go ahead and let me show you how we peel away this applique pressing sheet from the back of the fabric where we've just applied the fusible. When you peel off the applique pressing sheet, it leaves the fusible behind on the fabric. Now, one of the reasons why I love this sheet so much is because of the large size. This size sheet is 21 by 27. It has a curved corner in this right-hand corner, and that's really helpful because when you keep that curved corner on your bottom right every time you press, you're always using the same side of that sheet. And we don't wanna flip that sheet over 
because we might have some fusible residue from the last time we pressed. And if you have fusible residue on your sheet, you can feel it with your hand, you can peel it away with your fingernail, or I like to use a kitchen scrubby to clean that off of my, um, of my sheet. So now that I'm done with that sheet, let's just roll it up and put it away in the tube that it came in. That way we have it ready for the next time. We're not gonna catch it with our scissors. It's gonna be perfect the next time we go to use it. And we're just gonna pop that right into the tube that it came in. So today I wanted to show you how to fuse your fabric with Misty Fuse. Now this fabric is all fused and ready to go. It's nice and shiny. That means the fusible is really well melted on the back. If your fusible still looks like spider webs, that means you haven't pressed it long enough. And the reason why I love the Misty Fuse is it's, um, the Misty Fuse is super soft and lightweight. It is gorgeous to use. It melts beautifully on the back of your fabric. You don't need that paper backing because I'm gonna show you how to cut out all of your applique shapes with your rotary cutter and my tools, and there's no paper backing necessary. In fact, you don't want the paper backing on there because if you cut out all these gorgeous applique shapes, you don't wanna have to peel the paper backing off your applique shapes when you're done. We're simply gonna fold our fabric, cut it out with our tools, and we're gonna get these gorgeous applique shapes that are ready to press onto our um, background fabrics. So today, I'm gonna be showing you the Leaves Galore tools. And the Leaves Galore tools make all of these beautiful applique shapes. So we're going to learn how to make vines, standard leaves, S-shape curves, Z-shape curves, and lemon shape leaves as well. All of these shapes I use in my applique quilts over and over and over again. In fact, that common leaf shape, the most common shape in applique, I use them hundreds of times on my applique quilts. So you're gonna wanna learn how to use, how to make those quickly and easily. So I saw a um, comment over here from Patty. Patty, you need another applique, uh, excuse me, another fat goddess sheet. It's wonderful when you have two, you can lay one out on your big ironing board and then you can cover over with a second goddess sheet. They're 21 inches by 27 inches. So having two allows you to fuse bigger pieces of fabric easier without getting any fusible on your ironing board cover. So that's a great point, Patty. It's nice to have two. So nice to see all of you here this morning. Um, you love the roll, Patty. You bought the roll of Misty Fuse and you never regretted it. It is the best. Yes, it absolutely is. Well, I'm going to put my pressing surface away for now and I want to take out my kit. My kit has everything you need for fusible applique. Let me show you this beautiful kit that um, a friend of mine made for me. So this kit, I'm gonna show you the pattern for it. Not only did my friend make this um, kit for me, but she also made a pattern for this kit. So this is the pattern right here. It's called the Quilter's Keep. And that pattern was made specifically for the Leaves Galore tools. So let me show you how beautifully everything fits inside. So inside the Quilter's Keep, I wish I could show you the whole thing at once, but right here we have our fat goddess sheet by Misty Fuse. This is the pressing sheet that I use. It comes in this cardboard tube. And when I say you wanna put that sheet away back in the tube, that tube becomes the spine for this bag. So you have some rigidity to the bag. Then over here, we have all of our leaves galore rulers, our hearts and more tools, and our quilters chalk line and the chalk up here. And on this side, we have all these great pockets to hold all of our books and patterns. We have all of our gadgets in here and in here. And here's a great place to put those patterns, our iron cleaning sheets, 
you need a good iron cleaner when you're doing fusible just in case you end up putting fusible on the bottom of your iron. So these iron cleaning sheets are the quick and easy way to clean your iron. We also have an iron cleaning product called the Bowen Iron Cleaner. This one's been used and used. I melt this on the bottom of my iron. That takes off all of the little bits and specks of Misty Fuse. And this is the best product out there for cleaning your iron. It's called the Bowen Iron Cleaner. So all these products that I'm showing you today, I'm going to show you. Let's start with showing you all the things in my toolkit. Okay. The first thing in my toolkit is a kitchen scrubby. That's to clean off my applique pressing sheet when it gets a little extra Misty Fuse melted on it. You can also use an old credit card, an old card from your hotel, and scrape off any excess fusible from that pressing sheet. So those are always in my kit. What else do I have? I have an emery board. Why do I have an emery board in my kit? And by the way, anybody that purchased yesterday, this was one of your free gifts in your purchase yesterday. Today, we're going to have a different free gift. So I'll show that to you in a minute. That emery board sands out the edges of my tools if I catch the tool with my blade by mistake. And I'll show you that when I'm cutting, sometimes I'll catch the edge of that curved tool with my blade and to smooth that edge out, I'm gonna use an emery board. So everybody that purchased yesterday got one of my Sue Pellin Designs emery boards in their order. So uh, just to let you know that when you had an order from yesterday, I packed them all up yesterday, but I didn't ship yet because I knew some of you would be back today and I wanted you to be able to add to that order if you were uh, looking for some of these products that we're demonstrating today. So the Leaves Galore tool goes right here in my bag and then I have a few additional items. So let me show you all of the other items that are in my bag but I'm gonna close that bag and get rid of it so that you can see these items on the table where it will be a little less busy with distractions. So I'm gonna put that beautiful bag away. You can see that she decorated one side of the bag with my Leaves Galore tools. She decorated the second side of the bag with all of the hearts and more shapes and it's the perfect Sue Pellin Designs bag. All right, so I'm putting my bag away for now, and I want to show you all of those little things that were in my kit. So what did I have in my kit? I definitely have a good 28 millimeter rotary cutter. This rotary cutter is by the Olfa Company. It's my favorite rotary cutter out there, and it is the Quick Change rotary cutter from Olfa. So the quick change means that you take this little red um, snap here, you snap down, take your blade out, replace your blade, put a new blade on, and snap it back together. It's that easy, and the quick change rotary cutter is a great addition to your toolkit. You're also going to want to have a package of brand new blades. When we cut with the tools, you need a nice, sharp blade. And if you saw my email yesterday, we talked about why you need a good sharp blade in your 28 millimeter rotary cutter. So if you didn't get the email yesterday with my newsletter, you're going to want to go to my, um, my website. And on the right hand side, you're going to see a little, um, uh, a pretty little picture that says, send in your email address and we're going to give you a free pattern and that's also going to sign you up for our newsletter. So go ahead and do that here today. But we talked about why we need a sharp blade in our rotary cutter and why the 28 millimeter rotary cutter is the only rotary cutter I use to cut with my tools. Other things in, I have in my bag are some Roxanne glue base it, and I also have my little um, tweezers these tweezers open up when I squeeze and they close when I close. And that is a really nice little product to have when you're using, uh, when you're doing your buttonhole stitch applique. So those, that's also in my toolkit. I have a friction marking pen. Yesterday, I demonstrated the quilter's chalk line 
and the iron erasable chalk. And those are beautiful tools to use when you are working with um, any other color except white. If you're using white fabric for your backgrounds, this white chalk powder doesn't show up very well. So I often will go for a friction marking pen within reason. We have limitations on using the friction marking pen. If you wanna know about that, you're gonna to wanna to take one of those classes with me where I talk about all of those different things. Um, then we have a Hera marker. A Hera marker is a great tool for using your templates to mark quilting designs. You're gonna score those designs with your Hera marker and be able to see that design for machine quilting or for hand quilting. So I always use a Hera marker with my tools. And the last thing is I have some glow line tape. I use the glow line tape to mark the tools when I want certain measurements marked or I want a quarter of an inch line marked away from one of these solid lines, that's when I'll use my glow line tape. And one last thing in my toolkit, I have my Grace True Grips. I put the Grace True Grips on the back of the tools and that prevents the tools from slipping when you cut. So now that we know what all of these little tools are for, and I know I didn't go into great detail, but when you take my classes, you're going to be able to see me using all of these different tools and you're gonna know exactly what everything is for. But if I were to create a kit of everything that you need for rotary cut applique, those would be the items in my kit. There's one more thing that's missing. And oh, here it is right here. I just put it aside. This is a different Hera marker. And here are my little scissors. When I do my applique and then I find that I have a little hair sticking out beyond my buttonhole stitching, I can grab those little hairs with my reverse tweezers I can grab that little hair, clip up under it with my curved edge snips, and that will clean up the edges of my applique. So that was one more thing that was in my toolkit. These are the essentials to have when you're doing rotary cut applique. And another essential that I have are my grab -a gloves. So if I were to create a list of everything that you need for rotary cut applique, all of these items would be on that list. And guess what? I do have a list of everything that you need for rotary cut applique. I guess I should share that list with you, right? So um, I will um, put that in a future newsletter. How's that? Let's create that list, get it all prettied up for you. And in a future newsletter, I will, um, I will send out that list to the entire group. Okay, now um, that, list that I have. Um, I haven't made it separately, but I have it in a 12 page booklet called The Magic of Rotary Cut Applique. When you have that 12 page booklet, it gives you tips and techniques for using your leaves galore tools, your hearts and more tools, your quilters chalk line, and all the essential tools for rotary cut applique. When you join my membership, you get the magic of Rotary Cut Applique, the 12 page booklet. And this month when you join, you're also gonna get that 28 millimeter rotary cutter with the quick change blade. So who is the membership for? The membership is for anyone that wants to learn the secrets to Rotary Cut Applique by taking a series of workshops with me. I give workshops every month, three to four workshops each month. Those are all online workshops. You can take them with me from the comfort of your own home using your own supplies, using your own sewing machine. Now, it used to be that I would teach at these national shows like the Mancuso shows, and I would still love to be doing that. But unfortunately, with the situation we're in in the world right now, I'm not able to go to the national shows to teach. So instead, we are teaching online 
and we're teaching through the Zoom platform. Now, if you've never used Zoom before and you want to find out what it's like to take an online workshop, you can go ahead and sign up on my website right down below. She's at SuePellandesigns.com. Go to the right hand side once again, and you're going to sign up for the free workshop, Mint Chocolate. Um, the Mini Mint Chocolate Workshop is on August 17th. That's next Monday. And you can sign up today and get ready to take that workshop with me just to see what the Zoom platform is all about. When you do sign up, I'll send you a link to the supply list and you can get your supplies ready and you can work right along with me. And in that class, we're going to learn how to cut these leaves. And I'm going to show you that today. But in the workshop, you get to work right along with me. So today I'm going to show you how to cut with the Leaves Galore tools. And in that workshop, I'm also going to show you how to cut with the Leaves Galore tools. But I'm also going to show you how to make the mint chocolate miniature quilt. So sign up for the workshop today and we can get started. All right. So today we're going to use our fabric that we've already put our fusible on. I've got two layers of fabric here. I could go up to four layers of fabric and fusible at a time when I'm cutting with my rotary cutter. With a nice sharp 28 millimeter rotary cutter blade, I can cut through four layers of fabric and fusible at a time. So I'm going to place my tool on the fabric so that the entire right hand side of the curve is on fabric. Now, for my right-handed cutters, you're gonna keep your fabric edges here on the right and your tool up against that edge. Now, we're going to just slide over far enough so that we can cut that serpentine edge and it's all on fabric. I've got about a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here. I'm about a quarter of an inch up above the edge of my fabric before I see this beautiful little leaf shape right here. Carol, there is no pattern or kit available for the Quilters Keep pattern. Okay, there is the pattern by itself. There is no kit. So if you are interested in a kit, I'm afraid you're going to have to make your own. I don't make very many kits because um, I don't have a shop where I have all of the products necessary for that pattern. I would need zippers, I would need fabrics, and of course everybody's um, uh, tastes are different. So I have not created a kit for that pattern. So you have just seen me cut with my rotary cutter um, right along the edge of that tool. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go back to my full screen. You don't need to be seeing me standing and doing that cutting. So I've cut right along the edge of the rotary cutter with my 28 miller of, of my tool with the 28 millimeter rotary cutter. Now, I don't remove this piece of fabric when I make a second cut. I'm gonna squeeze all that fabric right back together. Now I'm gonna leave a little tiny gap so that you can see where I cut. And then I'm gonna take that tool and I'm gonna slide it up by one full leaf shape. The leaf shape is outlined with a dash line on the tool and I'm placing that dash line right over the line I've just cut. Now in order to make my leaves per perfectly sized, I'm going to squeeze that fabric back together. I don't want any gap between the two cuts. And now I'm ready to make my second cut. So I'm going to cut right along the edge of the tool keeping my blade upright, hugging it against the edge of the tool. And when I'm practicing, I'm only going to get a half an inch to an inch at a time until I get the hang of cutting with these curves. And you can see how easy it is to cut one, two, three, four sets of leaves at a time, four layers at a time, so I can make 12 to 16 leaves with every cut. Now here in this demo, I'm only cutting two layers. When I cut for a project, I cut four layers at a time so I can get that project done for 
times as fast. Now I've just made another cut with my rotary cutter and I'm gonna show you that process one more time. I'm gonna cut along the right side edge with my rotary cutter. Now I'm gonna slide my tool either up or down by one full leaf shape. The dash line on the tool follows the line that I've just cut and now I'm ready to cut again. Now, those of you who are members of Ahead of the Curve and take classes with me on a regular basis, you've heard all of these steps before and you could probably recite them in your sleep. Now, what's really nice about that is you, after you have practiced this technique, you don't even have to think. You're just going to cut these applique shapes as easy as can be. Now, these beautiful applique shapes leave you just a tiny little bit of wasted fabric in between. Now let's take off that blue one so I can show you this little green um, piece here. In one of my quilts in Belle en Rouge, I use that little scrap piece to be the thorny bushes that hold my rose petals. Now my, rose, my roses, so that quilt Belle en Rouge is a basket quilt filled with roses. And I use this little stem right here and the leaves to go behind the roses and it's a gorgeous quilt. So Belle en Rouge would be one way to learn how to use your leaves galore and your hearts and more tools. Now, how else can we learn how to use these tools? I would love to show you how, excuse me, all the other ways to learn how to use your tools. So let me just talk to you about those different opportunities. When you're learning to use your Leaves Galore tools, it's really nice to have someone to guide you. And that someone might as well be me. Now, I do have a lot of teachers across the country, but unfortunately, they're not teaching in their local quilt shops. Uh, like and at the shows like we normally would be. So here's an opportunity to take workshops directly with me. If you go to SuePellandDesigns.com right there at the bottom of your screen, you can look at our online workshops. We have both live and um, pre-recorded video courses. So Belle en Rouge is an example of one of those pre-recorded video courses. Another one of our pre-recorded video courses is my, uh, my Magical Garden. This gorgeous quilt that we've made using the Leaves Galore and the Hearts and More tools is one example of one of the ways that you can learn how to use your tools online. When I teach the individual workshops, day long, half day, full day, and two day workshops, we are working on smaller projects. Let me give you an example of one of those smaller projects. And so I'm gonna just go to the camera where you can see me talking. Good, and I'm gonna show you a couple of those smaller projects. So here we have Melissa's quilt. This is a beautiful orange peel style quilt with leaves and flowers. And this is a great beginner quilt class, beginner applique class. So Melissa's quilt will be coming up in the rotation soon. I only do three classes a month. So I have to rotate those classes. So our members who have been taking classes with me for a while always have something new to look forward to. But our new members might want to go back and do some of these classes that we've already offered. They come up in the rotation every three to four months. So when you're a member, you're going to be watching that offer. And this is one of those classes. We have um, the Magic Carpet Table Runner. That's using the Leaves Galore tools. And we have... Um, the points at a table runner, this one's coming up before the holidays. So we'll be able to make this quilt in one of our uh, day long classes. And this is a beautiful table runner that makes a great gift for the holidays. You can also make this one into placemats. So if you just shorten this up, 
put your flower just on one end, you've got a beautiful placemat for the holidays. Another pattern that we have done in our online workshops is the promise ring pattern. And this is that same leaf that you just saw me cut. Now, one of you asked, what size tool am I using? When I demonstrate, I always use my Norm Leaves Galore tool. That's the medium size Leaves Galore template. It's the easiest one to demonstrate with. It's the easiest one to learn. The smaller one is um, the curves are smaller and it's a little harder to get used to cutting with those curves. The three inch one is the one I recommend you begin with, but you're gonna want all three. Then we have our season's greetings pattern. I've already taught this a couple of times. We might not be teaching this again before Christmas, but this is a beautiful pattern using our four inch leaves galore tool. And all of these quilts that you see behind me are also coming up in our online courses. So the one that, um, the one that I'm thinking of, and here you've got two views of me, you don't need that right now. Um, let's go ahead and just do the single one there. Okay, so one of the classes that we have coming up, you can see is the Hope's Diamond Pattern. That Hope's Diamond Pattern is an August workshop. Then next to it, we've got the Christmas Ribbons. Christmas Ribbons was made using just the Leaves Galore tool and just the large Leaves Galore tool for this quilt and for the Hope's Diamond quilt. Then you see a small little quilt there, and that is um, Inner Circle. That's our logo for our Inner Circle uh, group on um, our membership. So our inner, excuse me, our ahead of the curve membership um, allows our members to take a workshop with me every month so that they can learn step by step how to use these tools. So you might choose Melissa's quilt one month, you might choose Hope's Diamond the next month, and you might choose the inner circle quilt in the following month. Every month you get to choose from three different workshops. And that to me is the best way to learn how to use these tools. So I just wanna go back up to some um, of the comments. I wanna make sure that I'm answering your questions. The Zoom classes are fabulous. And at the end, you have a finished project. Thank you, Colleen. Colleen has been taking classes with me from the beginning of the Head of the Curve membership. And Colleen is lickety split, gets her quilts done so quickly because she knows the secrets of rotary cut applique. So thank you, Colleen. You can't find the link to sign up for the mint chocolate workshop. Okay, Betsy, here's what you do. You go down and shop at suepellandesigns.com. In that shop, you're gonna find online live workshops. In the live workshop section, you're gonna find mint chocolate. And if you sign up for mint chocolate, you can buy it. That means you put it in your shopping cart. For zero dollars. You don't have to pay a penny to take that workshop with me. It's my free workshop for August, and you'll also see a free work for, workshop for September. Go ahead and take one or both of those workshops, and that'll be your introduction to using Zoom to take an online quilt class. So, Betsy, thank you for that question. You finally get it, Kate. Awesome. I'm going to give you another demo of different things you can do with the tools. Marilyn, I'm using the Norm Leaves Galore tools. Gail, you're addicted to these tools. Thank you. Kathy, Kathy Knight, that is so kind of you. Um, okay, good, good. All right, you want to take all the classes once you get your internet figured out. That's great. Okay, Carol. Oh, no kit, just the pattern for the quilters keep. Thank you. Um, the reverse tweezers. Yes, Annabelle, aren't they fantastic? I love those reverse action tweezers. All right, you tried to sign up for the mailing list. You filled out your name and your email and it stated that the page does not exist. Okay, Joanne, I'm gonna take care of that. You just send me an email, Sue 
at suepellindesigns.com. Ask to be added to our email list and I will put you on the list and I'll figure out what that link issue is all about. Thank you for that. Okay, the pattern for the bag, it is on my site and it is called The Quilter's Keep. So I've buried it, it's missing. I don't know where that pattern is right now. Well, it's actually in the pattern, it's in the bag. So The Quilter's Keep pattern right here, that's the one adorable isn't it that's the one that holds all of my products so beautifully so yes that is on my website thank you for asking um the quilters keep free shipping i cannot get free shipping to work on my website i am working on it i hope to have it fixed by tomorrow so instead instead i'm sending everybody a free gift today so today you're going to get the gypsy um iron rest that is an iron rest where you can put your iron down. I have a different one here that came with the iron, but for those irons that don't come with an iron rest, this is what I'm gonna be sending you as my free gift to you today. I've got my website team working on the free shipping issue, but I can't get it working. So we're gonna go ahead and do something different, and then I'm gonna do the free shipping in another at another time, okay? So instead, we're gonna get free gifts. Um, yesterday, if you ordered, you're gonna get the emery board and a friction marking pen. Today, if you order, you're gonna get the iron rest from the Gypsy Quilter. Tomorrow, we'll think of another item. So feel free to order all three days. I will combine all of those orders, send them all out at one time. And that way we can combine shipping and oh, you know what though? If you pay shipping all three orders, I'm gonna refund that shipping, okay? So if you go ahead and order um, and you're ordering multiple orders, I will refund the second or the third order on the shipping, okay? So other shapes that we can make with our tools. Let me just give you a brief demonstration. I'm gonna cut once with the tool the next thing that I'm gonna do, instead of cutting standard leaves where I need this piece right here, I'm simply gonna slide straight over and I'm gonna be able to cut my vines. Straight over by about 3 8 of an inch makes the perfect little vine shape. And when I use those vines and my leaves, I can make a beautiful applique quilt. So yes, you can use your vines, your leaves, you do not need to make a bias vine. You can simply cut and fuse your vine and then stitch right along the edges with your buttonhole stitching, your blanket stitching, uh, whatever decorative stitching you like best. Another shape that you can make is by pulling down and to the left at the same time. When you pull down and to the left at the same time, You've got these beautiful S-shaped curves. Your S-shaped curves make things like your ribbons, your ropes, your flower petals, and all of these gorgeous different applique quilts. There's my ribbon right there. How simple and easy was that? The last shape I'm gonna show you is your lemon-shaped leaves. When you make your lemon-shaped leaves, you put your peaks and your valleys together. You've got these gorgeous lemon shapes that you can use in your applique quilts. So that's it for the Leaves Galore tool. These are all of the shapes that I hope that you would love to incorporate into your applique quilts. And the Leaves Galore tool makes that so easy. So let's put away our Leaves Galore tool for a moment. And I want to go ahead and share with you some more information about what we're doing here at Sue Pellin Designs. So let me change my camera here. There we go. Thank you for your patience. This technology is always a challenge for me trying to figure out all of this stuff here. All right. So here at Sue Pellin Designs, I make the applique tools. I design new applique tools and I design new patterns all the time. So I wanna get back to that show special. 
because I want to show you all of the things that you're going to get when you take advantage of our no show show today and our show special. So I'm going to change back to my table where you can see the show specials for today. In my little bag of tricks here, I have a show special that's all made up. In your Fast Start Basic Package, you're going to get the set of three Leaves Galore tools. Of course, you're going to get your bonus item for today. So let me put that out as well. And you're going to be getting two sets of the Grace True Grips in that basic package. So the Grace True Grips prevent your tools from slipping and you're going to be able to use the Grace True Grips on the back of your tools, both your Leaves Galore tools and your Hearts and More tools. So if you buy the basic package today, you're going to receive the set of four Hearts and More tools, both sets of Grace True Grips, the set of three Leaves Galore tools and your bonus item. So all of this together is our basic show package. So that's this one right here. It's called the Fast Start Package. So if you're on my website, you're going to look at the shop. You're going to look under templates at the shop and you're going to find the Fast Start Basic Package and that's gonna get you started with all of these items. Now, if you know that you learn best when you can read all about it, the next package also includes both of my books. So these are my demo books here in my bundle. I've got two brand new books for you. And by the way, if you buy this package today and you want your books autographed, I can certainly sign those before I send them out to you. So the middle package, the standard package, the fast and fabulous package has both sets of tools, my quilter's chalk line that we learned all about yesterday, the two packages of Grace True Grips, the Leaves Galore book, and the Hearts and More book. So we're gonna add my quilter's chalk line and the iron erasable chalk. And that package is called the Fast and Fabulous Standard Package. You're gonna get everything that you see here in that standard package. I'm just gonna take away those items that I demonstrated earlier that are not included in the package. Okay, so everything you see here is in the standard package. My deluxe package has everything that we've already talked about today. And we're going to add our large package of Misty Fuse. That's 10 yards of Misty Fuse. And that Misty Fuse is 20 inches wide. Then we're going to get a fat goddess sheet in that bundle for you because you're going to want to use this fat goddess sheet to put the Misty Fuse on your fabric. We're going to include the quick change Old for rotary cutter, the one where you can change your blade with just one flick of the switch. And we're going to get you a package of two rotary cutter replacement blades so you can always be cutting with a sharp blade. There's one more thing to add to that bundle, and that's our chalk wheel. When you are using your chalk line to mark straight lines, you may also want the chalk wheel to mark curve lines along the edges of our tools. So this big bundle that has everything that I have um, listed here, that big bundle is called the uh, Fabulous Fusible Bundle. The deluxe package that has your fusible your goddess sheet, your rotary cutter, and your blades, and everything else that you saw before, that's all available under the templates on my website. Good. Now that you know what's included in all those bundles, let's once again 
talk about how you're going to learn how to use these tools. Well, on my website, there's a whole section about learning Rotary Cut Applique. We have lots of options. We have free videos right there on the website. And we've got those two free workshops coming up, one on August 17th and one on September 10th. So sign up for the free workshops to get you started. Then when you want more, when you want to learn directly from me, you can sign up for our online Zoom workshops to make Hope's Diamond, to make Christmas ribbons, to, to make um, Inner Circle. Uh, we have lots of exciting workshops coming up that we are just planning. So there'll be three new workshops every month. You can take, excuse me, you can take all three workshops or take them one at a time. Now, even if you only take one workshop a month, that is the perfect pace to learn your tools. One workshop a month allows you to start and finish that project before you start the next one. No more UFOs. One workshop a month will get you using your Leaves Galore and your Hearts and More tools confidently. If you want more workshops, you are welcome to take all three workshops every month. But in our membership, you end up getting a discount on your workshops. Our membership is $49 a month. That includes any workshop. Now, my workshops, if they are a four-hour workshop, they're $49. But if you take a six-hour workshop at $69 or a two-day workshop, that's eight hours at $99, you're going to save a bundle when you join the membership. The membership is $49 a month and you get any of those workshops that you want. Any one workshop, no matter what the price. You're also going to get a discount on the website and you're going to have access to our private Facebook group where all of these terrific people are learning how to use their tools and they are there to encourage you, help you, and it, they, may, they might just become your best quilting friends. It's a little bit like having a guild right online. So our membership is open to everyone. Whether you've tried the tools before or not, you're going to get one workshop a month so you can learn how to use these tools. Now, if that's not for you, if it's just not something you're interested in taking the live Zoom workshops, we have pre-recorded workshops. You can take a workshop that lasts eight weeks or nine months, and you can do step-by-step -step to learn how to use these tools still with me. I've pre-recorded these videos so you don't need to be there live and you can take these workshops from your own home at your own pace. However you'd like to do them, you can do these workshops um, with me, but not there with me in the same room. So there you go. Three different ways to learn how to use your tools. You've got my online videos that are free. You've got my online workshops, the two workshops that are free. Then you have the Zoom workshops. And if you decide to take the Zoom workshops, the membership is the least expensive way to take advantage of those workshops. And then the third way is the pre-recorded workshops, Belle en Rouge, Gradations, and My Magical Garden. Now those projects are big projects. They're pretty involved. So what I would recommend is the individual workshops to get started so you have a sense of accomplishment, you have no UFOs, and you have a bunch of small projects under your belt to learn the techniques. Then once you have those basic skills, when you take My Magical Garden or Belle en Rouge or Gradations, it'll be a snap for you. You'll already know some of these techniques. You'll still learn some brand new techniques, but you'll have the confidence that you need to get started. Okay, um, yes, let's see. So many ideas, Penelope. I know, I have a million of them. All right, let's see if we have any other questions that I did not answer just yet. And how much is the Ahead of the Curve Club? Thank you, Sherry. I hope I answered that for you. It's $49 a month. You get access to one workshop a month at any price point. You take any of the three workshops that you want to take, and it is included with your membership. 
you're also going to get an 11% discount off of our website. So anything you need to buy for those workshops, anything that you don't already have from these items at home, you can go ahead and use your discount code for the membership. You also get a private Facebook group. It's like our own little quilting guild where we all get together, share our progress, share our success stories. We share our struggles as well. And we all come together and help each other to learn more about applique and just to uh, enjoy each other's friendship. When you join this month, you're going to get the 12 page booklet, The Magic of Applique, and you're also going to get your very own quick change rotary cutter from Ulfa. Now, you might already have an Ulfa cutter at home, but you don't have this one more than likely. This quick change rotary cutter is fairly new and it's the best rotary cutter that I can recommend. Why am I doing the free rotary cutter when you join the membership? You're going to take a whole lot of workshops with me and I want you to have the right tools for the job. If you don't have an Ulfa rotary cutter, a 28 millimeter rotary cutter, then this is the one that you want to take my workshops. Trust me, it's the best product out there. Even if you have an old one, this one's better and you're gonna wanna use this one. All right, so that's about the membership. Can you use your tools for hand applique? In other words, can we add a quarter of an inch to turn under? Diane, absolutely. So I just tossed away all of my samples, all of the items that I had cut with the rotary cutter. I don't seem to be able to find any of those leaves right now as we're speaking. Here we go. Okay, this is a three inch leaf from the Norm Leaves Galore tool. I'm trying to clear off my table here so that you can see what I'm going to show Diane, who's interested in using my tools, not only for usable applique, but for hand applique as well. So I'm gonna give you a little trick of the trade here. I'm gonna use my Norm Leaves Galore tool. And let me show you that, um, that second camera view so you can see my workstation here. Okay. So Diane asked, can we use these tools for uh, regular hand applique? And the answer is absolutely. The, the thing is that what you see on the tool is the cut size. So three inches over here is the cut size. Five inches, sorry, six inches here is the cut size. If you go up to the four inch tool, four inches is the cut size and eight inches is the cut size. When you cut with these tools, you're gonna to get the size on the tool. But what if I took that three inch leaf, if I didn't have the fusible on the leaf, I'm going to use my Hera marker and my tool, and I'm gonna score the edge of that leaf with the Hera marker. What is that gonna do? It's gonna mark a line approximately a quarter, excuse me, a quarter of an inch on the inside of the cut line and I can fold on that scored line very, very easily when I have scored it with the Hera marker. So I'm gonna fold under on that line because I'm finger pressing on that line, that leaf is gonna have a memory on that line. And when I go to needle turn applique, it's gonna turn under very, very easily as I swipe my needle under and stitch that leaf down. So yes, you absolutely can use this tool for hand applique as well, but it is intended for fusible applique. So what you see is what you get. A three inch leaf, a three inch curve makes a three inch fused leaf. A six inch curve makes a six inch fused leaf. And if you use this for hand applique, your sizes are going to be a half of an inch smaller, okay? So yes, the answer is you can use these for hand applique as well. Um, yes, June, yesterday I mentioned free shipping. I cannot get it to work on my, on my um, website. We have a new website. I'm struggling with it, especially the coupon section. I've got my web designer working on it. I have not been able to get the free shipping to work. 
So instead, we are throwing in free products instead. Um, if you are ordering multiple times over the last couple of days, I'm going to combine all of that. So you're only going to pay shipping once. Everything else will be refunded and um, you'll still get your free product. Okay. So thank you for that. I wish I could make it work. I'm not able to make it work. But the next time I do this, I promise you, I will make that free shipping work. As soon as I get it figured out, I will let everybody know and we'll do a free shipping day. How's that? Buttonhole stitch applique. Thank you, Holly. What do I like to use? Um, when do you use the 2D variegated thread versus the clear or the smoke? Well, let's talk about threads. Since you're asking, I want to talk about it. So we are at 12 o'clock here. If you have to go, I understand. There's a lot to cover here. And I just want to point out the 2D variegated threads. So back on my table, let me change my view so you can see those gorgeous 2D variegated threads. Now, when do I use the 2D threads versus clear or smoke? I never use clear or smoke thread. Um, if I were turning my edges under, if I were using that method of applique, then I would use clear and smoke. But I'm not turning my edges under, I'm doing raw edge applique. So I want my edges to be enclosed in the buttonhole stitch. So let me show you an example here. Now these are all the things you're gonna learn when you take workshops with me. I want my edges to be enclosed in the buttonhole stitch. The buttonhole stitch dresses up the edges. It also holds the edges together so nothing frays. When I do that, I use the 2D variegated threads. I use all variegated threads. I just love them. I've got some sulky here that I love. It really depends on the color. But the line of threads that I carry is the 2D variegated thread. I have a 2D color chart that's available. It's actual thread samples. So if you want to know what these colors look like, you can get the 2D color chart. And these are all of the colors that are available to you on my website. So these colors are just spectacular. I love this peacock color. Isn't that beautiful teals and greens? I do a lot of greens and Tootie has six different greens in their lines. So when do I use the smoke and the clear? I don't, I don't use them at all. I use the Tootie variegated threads. I use Aurifil threads. I use all kinds of different threads, whatever I like the color best from. Whichever brand has the best colors, that's what I use. But I carry the Tootie because their color range is so beautiful. And I love the way it behaves. So the Tootie thread is what I generally use. So thank you for that question. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad you love the classes. That's great. I can't wait to see you again. You've been traveling. Um, how do I stitch the vines? I stitch the vines on both sides with a buttonhole stitch. Hey, Wendy, nice to see you. Okay. Um, you put out items in the shopping cart yesterday. You didn't want to pay shipping three times. Thank you for that. Yes, I will absolutely refund. If you have multiple orders from the three days, I will combine your shipping. Whatever your actual shipping is, I will refund the difference. I'm sorry that I couldn't get free shipping to work. Instead, we're doing free products. Okay. Um, you're curious about the cutting mat with no grid lines. What brand of mat is that? Great question. I have no idea. This is a brand that I found at a quilt show. It's called SE Products. SE Products. It's a white mat with no grid lines on the back. This is what I use for demonstrating only. When I'm in my workshop, I use a Martelli board. If anybody's interested in the big Martelli boards, I happen to have two of them. They're not on my website. If you're interested in a Martelli board, the big size one, I'm going to get you a deal because I've got two I want to get rid of. So we need to do a clearance day. One of these days, I'm going to announce a clearance day where I get rid of all of the products that I have one and two of in my store now that I'm not going to the shows anymore. 
I have a lot of products hanging around that I don't need anymore. So I'm happy to get rid of those to your benefit, give you a discount. So one of the questions that came up yesterday was, hey, I didn't know you had fabric on your website. Well, I carry one specific line of fabric. It is the Tim Holtz fabric. I use Tim Holtz fabric in so many of my quilts, especially I started using it when I did my magical garden. This has the beautiful Tim Holtz backgrounds. And if you're interested in my magical garden, we do have a bundle of fabric to make that quilt for the backgrounds and borders only. I don't have all the fabric for the applique, so I cannot do a full kit any longer, but I still have the background bundles available. If you love Tim Holtz as much as I do, we have his entire collection from his latest offering. I forget the name of this. It was um, just absolutely beautiful. We have a bundle of all of the different fabrics in his last collection. That's 12 one yard cuts in this bundle and um uh, all of my fabric uh, generally sells between 12 and 13 dollars a yard the tim holtz bundles included that's 12 dollars a yard on the tim holtz i also carry um white kona and black kona because those are so common in my quilts as backgrounds so i do carry both of those and you're going to see an assortment of other fabrics but the Tim Holtz is my primary line of fabric that I carry. Another thing that I carry are kits for my workshops. One of those kits for the workshops includes my cork notebook kit. And I don't happen to have my cork notebook handy where I can find it, but uh, that's okay. Um, I talked about we want to do a clearance day someday because I've got a lot of these items that my 2D uh, threads were held on as these art bin um, thread holders. So I've got a couple of those on clearance. You can go to my clearance on the website and see what's there that I'm trying to liquidate. Now that I'm not going to shows anymore, I only want to carry my own products in the shop. So you're going to see a lot of things over the next few weeks going into that clearance aisle. They're perfectly beautiful items. It's just that I'm not going to the shows where I'm going to sell those items anymore. So those are going to be cleared out. All right. Fantastic. So the packages, terrific. Um, you've bought some little pieces here and there along the way, Elaine. I get that. And so you can buy everything individually. You don't need to get the bundles, but the bundles are the least expensive way to do things and it really contains everything that you need for my um for my techniques all right i think that i if you oh good question marilyn if you become a member can you unsubscribe at any time yes i do request that you give it three months I want you to take three different workshops and make sure that you get the basics of what you need. However, I'm not going to fight with you if you say it's not working for you and you want to cancel. I'd like for you to give it three months so that you have the opportunity to try three different workshops. Also, there's a lot of paperwork involved. There's a lot of work involved on my end to get you set up. So giving it a fair shot. Um, I know you wouldn't do this, but... Some people might see a $99 workshop that they want to take and say, well, instead, I'm going to sign up for the membership for one month and then I'm going to turn it off. And then the next time I want to take an expensive workshop, I'm going to turn it on again. I can't do that. That's just too much paperwork and um, not paperwork. It's all on the computer now. But you get the idea. It's, it's a lot of um, overhead for me to turn people on and off like that. So I, I don't want you to be doing it month by month. But if the membership, if you find it's not for you, if it's not working for you, you can definitely cancel at any time and we'll take care of that with you. OK. All right. I'm so glad that you are a mem that you are here today. Um, I'm going to continue. Before you began today, there was a banner with great flowers. OK, Annabelle, I'm going to have to find out what that banner was. All right. Um, oh, Diane, 
Did you miss the demo on the feathers? I didn't do the feathers today. I had every intention of doing that today and I skipped right past it. You can go back to yesterday's video and I did the feathers on yesterday's video. I completely forgot about doing the feathers. I apologize for that. Okay. All right, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to mark and quilting lines. Okay, I'm gonna go back to mark and quilting lines for those of you that are still with me because I said I was gonna do it today and I completely forgot. So what I'm gonna suggest is you go back to yesterday's video because quite honestly, I don't have that demonstration set up right now. So um, let's say, let's go back to yesterday's video. You can watch the demonstration on marking the quilting lines. And um, I tell you what, tomorrow, let's do some more marking with our tools. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to do the clamshell marking. And at that same time, I will do the feather marking again. I did it yesterday. I forgot to do it today. And I'll do it again tomorrow. Okay, sorry about that. I got off off topic, didn't I? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and answer all of your questions um, right here on the Facebook page. And you can go back and look at those questions and answers later. The 2D thread is 50 weight cotton. It is cotton and it's 50 weight. All right, the eclectic elements. Yes, Amy, that is exactly right. That's the Tim Holtz line of fabric. Um, do you get the iron rack if you order a bundle or any order? Any order at all. Any order at all, you're going to get that free iron holder, okay? The iron rest. You do not, thank you, Betsy, you do not have to order the whole bundle to get the iron rest. Wonderful. Um, yes, Sylvia, if you want to stick with me, you know what? That's okay. Let's do the feathers demo. Okay, if you want to stick with me, that's great. I understand that I'm taking up a lot of your time. So if you want to move on, that's fine. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab some fabric so that I can do that feather demo for you. Give me one minute. I'll be right back with you. I just put that aside from yesterday and I didn't get it set up again for today. So sorry about that. So I need to find some black fabric so that I can do the feather demo and that you can see it easily. I don't have the black fabric handy, so I'm just going to grab any fabric at all that I have here. And I wonder where my black fabric went from yesterday. I really have no idea, but I'm going to just put some other fabric on here and pretend that it's the black. Now, while I was um, demonstrating, my iron fell on the floor and melted my carpet. <laughs> so let me just clean off that iron and put some fabric on my mat so that you can see what I'm talking about with these feathers. Thank you for the reminder. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, when you are marking feathers, I'm going to go down onto my workstation so that you can see this demonstration. I just grabbed a piece of blue fabric that I had handy here. I didn't know where my black fabric was. We're going to use this one instead. When I am marking feathers on my quilt, I want to be able to center my feathers on the area that I want them centered. So if this were a border on my quilt, I would want to mark the center of that border. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in and draw a chalk line on the center of that border. So I'm gonna draw one going across here and I'm gonna draw a chalk line going down this way. Okay, so this could be the corner of my quilt and I want a feather to go all around the corner. Or maybe I want a feather um, to go one way and then the other and then the other to fill in a space. So let me do a few different scenarios here. What I'm using is my quilter's chalk line. It's filled with iron erasable chalk. So that chalk line is going to go away with the iron. Then 
I'm going to grab one of my uh, tools and I'm going to grab my chalk wheel. This chalk wheel, I have a red one. The ones that I now sell are the blue ones, but it's the exact same product. You're going to put a little bit of chalk inside from your iron erasable chalk that comes with the quilter's chalk line, and you're going to be able to mark around your tool. So I'm going to um, consider this the corner of my quilt. This could be a feather or this could be a serpentine edge on your quilt. I'm using the edge of the tool right up against this straight line. And I'm using this straight line that goes down the center of the five inch curve right on the straight line that I just marked the center of my border. And I'm going to use my chalk wheel to make that curve. Now I can keep sliding down. And when I match up this straight line and I match up the curve that I've just marked, I'm going to be able to continue that curve all the way down the quilt. Now I'm going to go in this direction. I'm lining up the edge of the tool with this straight line and the centering line right here, this centering line straight up and down on the center of the border. And I'm going to mark this outside and inside curve and I'm going to slide down to continue that curve. So now I have this beautiful line right here that goes in a nice round circle around the corner, which is a great way to mark your feathers. Now, when I run a parallel line, that is a serpentine, I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna go this way and I'm pulling in my tool by as wide as I want my feathers to be. How wide do you want your feathers? That's personal preference. I'm gonna make my feathers about an inch and a half wide and I'm just gonna repeat that serpentine line. Now I'm repeating that serpentine line by using the width of this five inch curve. So I've got a five inch leaf right here and I'm gonna use the width of that leaf to mark the size of my feather. So I'm gonna continue around that outside curve until I have three lines. I've got my spine for the feather. That's beautiful, it goes all the way around your quilt and then I've got an inside line and an outside line. Now I'm gonna put the walking foot on my sewing machine and I'm gonna follow this line with the walking foot on my sewing machine around all four sides of the quilt. That's gonna give me a reference point. That's gonna give me the spine to follow when I do my free motion feathers. Now, when I do my free motion feathers, I'm pretending that this is the free motion foot on my sewing machine. This is not a free motion foot on my sewing machine. It is a chalk wheel and it's not gonna mark in both directions. So what I do is I put the free motion foot on my machine and I practice making half of a heart. Okay, half of a heart to the right. I'm gonna practice that over and over again. As you can see, my chalk wheel isn't drawing the top of that, but that's okay. You're gonna practice that motion, half of a heart, over and over and over again. And then you're gonna get up your courage and put the free motion foot on your machine and you're gonna draw half of a heart all the way along the edges of that spine. Now, what is wonderful about using this tool to mark your spine and to mark your outer boundary is that when you have an outer boundary to follow, it becomes very easy to draw that half of a heart right inside that boundary. Now, do you have to draw them all? No, you can just get accustomed to making this shape with your free motion foot and you're gonna make that shape with your free motion foot and not your marking tool. I'm only marking it to give you an idea of the line that you would follow. And you can see that by making half of a heart all the way down the right hand side of your spine, you're gonna get this beautiful, beautiful feather design. Now you're gonna get good at this after just a little bit of practice and you're gonna be able to mark, um, excuse me, to free motion quilt this feather all the way around your quilt. All right, then, 
You're going to practice making your heart shape in the opposite direction. I do this on a scrap piece of fabric. I'm going to just use my free motion foot and I'm going to trace this shape over and over and over again. And then you can trace it in a straight line and just practice that shape over and over and over again on a scrap piece of fabric. Once you have done that and you're confident going to the left with the left side of a heart shape, once you're confident with that, you're going to go ahead and fill in that heart shape on the left side of your feather with your free motion foot. You will get good at this over time and you'll be able to get them more and more consistent and all the way around that central spine. Having the width and a solid line to go by makes this process so much easier than just trying to guess where to fill in your feathers. Now, I'm going to give you one more scenario because I promised you we would talk about feathers today. And I know we're way over time, but that's okay. I really didn't have an end time on this, did I? So I want to give you another scenario on your feathers. What if you are trying to fill up a space? Let's iron this away. Do you see how the iron erasable chalk just goes away with the heat of your iron? Now, it does take uh, a little bit of heat and time because this chalk evaporates. It just evaporates into the air. So after you give it enough time and enough heat, it's gone. It's no longer in your fabric. But I will tell you, you need to test on your fabric and you need to use fabric that is washed because the chemical finishes in your fabrics can affect the way that chalk works. So let me give you one more scenario. What if we have, well, let's use our chalk line to make this nice straight line. What if we have a border that is say four inches wide? Let's make our border four inches wide. And we're gonna mark a line right down the center of that border. What if we want to fill in the entire space with our feather? So in other words, we're not gonna draw two guidelines to fill in that feather. We're just going to draw one guideline for the spine for our feather. I think I'll use the five inch curve again. I like this five inch curve when I'm doing a more spread out feather. So I'm gonna follow the straight line down the middle of the border like this. The middle of the border this way, okay. So all I'm gonna draw is the spine. I'm gonna use my walking foot to make that spine go all the way around my quilt. And then I'm gonna put my free motion foot on and I'm gonna fill in the space between the spine and the edge of the border. That's gonna make my feathers all different sizes or all different lengths, but you still have a guideline on either side to hold on to that feather. Okay, now we're going to go and do the other side. So we're constantly, we're actually using our, our free motion foot to make those feathers. And you can see with my, um, with my chalk, I'm not able to do it. But I would actually make these thinner, coming right into here. And with the chalk, this chalk does not write in both directions. It only writes in one direction. So I'm having a hard time showing you this. But what you're going to do is just fill in that space between the two with your feathers. Now I know that looks messy. I drew over it twice. I'm going to go ahead and just erase that half of the feather. And I can draw it again. Now sometimes it's nice to have some guidelines to go by. Um, so you can certainly draw this feather the first time that you're doing it because you want to get comfortable drawing your feather. Um, you wanna get comfortable with that, that motion and you're gonna get comfortable with it by doing it. So either by drawing it and uh, really playing with that design on paper or on fabric, you're going to be able to master these feathers. 
Now, let me just turn that camera angle once again. Ah, there we are. And I want to thank you. I know I've taken up a good deal of your time this morning, but I hope you've learned something new. For those of you that were waiting for the feathers, my apologies. I almost forgot to do it. So um, you can review the feathers from yesterday. Basically the same as what I did today, but I went into a little bit more detail this time. All right. Um, the small iron that I'm using, Debbie, that is the Aliso iron. This is made by the Aliso company. They're the ones that make the irons that go up on the little stilts. I do love this iron. I do not have them on my website, but you can go ahead onto Tracy Kennedy. Tracy from TNT Quilt Boards has these irons and you can get it from her. I love it, but it gets super duper hot. Um, even so hot that I, I don't love that the handle gets hot too, but it is a really, really nice mini iron. If you're looking for a mini iron, it's the best one out there. Um, Tracy carries these at TNT Quilt Boards. Um, if you become a member, will you get a discount on the products that you ordered today? Absolutely, Marilyn. Uh, go ahead and sign up for the membership first. I'll take care of you as soon as I get off here, and then you can go ahead and place your order. I'll send you the coupon code. Okay, good. All right, Trudy, I'm glad the concept was clear, even though I was using the wrong tool to draw those feathers. Wonderful, we'll see you all tomorrow. So nice to see all of you. I'll go back and answer all your questions. If you wanna join the membership, go ahead and do that first. And then I will get you your coupon code to use for all future purchases. Bye all, so nice to see you today.